Welcome back to Madison Square Garden, where Notre Dame leads the team that shares the number two spot in the coaches' poll. Connaughton gets the ball from the official, comes on into Grant. Grant driving top of the key. Now he's dribbling to his left, step back three. Yeah! Yeah! That last game, you know, against Ohio State, you know, it was. A couple minutes left, a couple seconds left, and you know, uh, my mind started wandering a little bit, and uh, you know, I think it really hurt me, you know, that you know this is going to be possibly my last game. 58-52, inbound pass to Jackson. They mug him. He loses the ball. Smith now drives into the lane, throws it off the glass and in. And suddenly, it's a four-point Irish lead. Grant now, he loses the ball. Off to Smith, and no, no basket. He's got a foul before the basket. Kraft drives the lane. Did he travel? No. Gets it inside the Smith. Lays it up and in. Ohio State back on top by one. Here comes Grant. Grant over the midcourt strike. Grant drives the lane and gets the ball. Knocked out of bounds off his body. Back to Ohio State. I don't know if I've ever handled a, had to handle a tougher locker room in my career where we were in position to win the game and we couldn't finish and it was really an excruciating loss there at the Garden. Then we also knew we were losing Jaron. Um, so your first thing was deal with the team and their psyche because we still had a whole ACC season to play after Christmas but yet deal with Jaron and you know we're going to support him and what's the transition and what's he going to do. I just remember being really quiet and not a lot of people were looking up. We we're just kind of looking around and I think it really finally hit us that day when we were sitting in Madison Square Garden like Jay is really going to leave and we're not going to see him again for four or five months. After the Ohio State game, you know, it was it was a tough loss, but uh, you know, the way the guys embraced me, the way coach talked to me, that was definitely huge for me just to know that, you know, they had my support, you know, even though they were going to go on without me, you know, they still wanted me back there and they still wanted me to be a part of the team even though I was gone. Well, everybody makes mistakes and, and I think that Jaron punished himself more than we could anyways. So he, he knew what he did was wrong and, and he had to bounce back from it. But the best part about it is we're a family. So the best part about that is being able to support our teammates and our brother. Well, you're concerned about the young man. I mean, uh, he had built up great momentum both academically and basketball wise here. Uh, obviously, he's a big part of our basketball team and it was going to affect our basketball team. But how's this going to affect him? Knowing that the ruling at the end of the day would be that he'd be away from us for a semester, would he return? and finish school. I was definitely angry, you know, especially to start, you know, I was angry at Notre Dame, you know, I was I was mad at, at everyone, you know, I was mad at the school. I was really upset, you know, um, I didn't really think about, you know, I was the one who made the mistake, you know, I kind of looked at it as Notre Dame takes things too seriously or uh, it's Notre Dame's fault. You know, after I realized that, you know, it, it helped for me to move on and, you know, kind of let it go and, you know, once I realized that, I think it, it became easier for me to, you know, uh, talk to the guys on the team and it kept, helped me make a decision that I wanted to come back, you know, because it wasn't Notre Dame's fault. I don't know, maybe in other situations around the country, kids don't return after something like this. But I think it's because we build really deep relationships here. I think I have great relationships with my guys and they know I care about them and they know our staff cares about them and Notre Dame cares about them. The decision to, to leave or come back, I think definitely had to do a lot with, you know, my personal decision to go back and uh, right some wrongs. Of course, you know, my teammates and, you know, Coach Bray, you know, I've built a great relationship with Coach Bray, you know, him coming from my area, you know, my high school. Having to leave him the way I had to, I had to leave it definitely wasn't something that I wanted to uh, leave with. I think it was really tough to, uh, to leave those guys like that. At the same time, you know, just me being who I am, I didn't want to, you know, leave a bad taste in, in my mouth with Notre Dame and with the fans and, you know, just the whole Notre Dame community. At the end of the day, it was going to affect our team, certainly, and it did. But at the end of the day, one of the reasons I love working here and coaching here and teaching here is, you know, there, there's a different mission here than, than a lot of other places to, you know, have these young people become young men. And, and develop him as a young man was to make sure he came back here to let him know that he's going to serve a heck of a penalty. I mean, it's a brutal penalty. It's also out there for everybody to hear about on a daily basis and every night we played. Uh, but after that, we want him back and it's going to be a great story. And we have his back and he's going to graduate from here and the mission's not done. As I used to text him those the first two months, you know, our work together is not done. 
That's how I would end my text with him, and he would always say, yes, sir, absolutely. Staying in contact with Coach Bray when I left definitely meant a lot to me, you know. Uh, with my mind, my mind wandering on, you know, should I go play in the NBA, should I, you know, take my, uh, you know, go play somewhere else, and then, uh, you know, having him text me or call me, you know, definitely kept me engaged with him and, you know, with the Notre Dame team, and, uh, you know, without him, you know, communicating the way he did, I really don't think I'd be here right now. The time away from Notre Dame definitely made me appreciate it, you know, uh, you know, I was working out, you know, with a lot of family members and traveling a little bit. I thought he and his mom came up with a great plan. He spent about three weeks with Horace Grant, his uncle, out in California. He spent about two or three weeks with his grandparents in Wichita. He spent time with his godparents in New Orleans. So he kind of moved around. You know, my mom played a huge role. Uh, you know, obviously she wants me to come back and get my degree, but, you know, she wasn't all stuck on that. You know, she, she looked at the options, you know, weighed the options to, you know, maybe me leaving and, you know, going and play professionally. But, you know, at the end of the day, she was, she was behind me with whatever, whatever I wanted to do. One of the things I asked him to do was email me after every game his thoughts on the game. And I have a, a stack of emails, uh, for example, after the Maryland game, coach thought our guards could have been a little better defensively, too many turnovers in the second half. I mean, he, he has a very high basketball IQ. He had some insights that we as the coaching staff didn't have that I used. And so it also was a way of keeping him engaged with us. Well, emailing coach after the games definitely kept me engaged. You know, it was, it was pretty easy to do because, you know, I love the game and I love, you know, analyzing the game, but at the same time, it was pretty tough just because, you know, I wasn't being able to part, you know, telling them the things that I wanted to do, you know, I couldn't do because I wasn't out there, but, you know, just being able to talk to him about the game, you know, see the game from a different view, definitely helped me out. Uh, I text him probably at least twice a week, probably. We, we, we stayed in contact. I just make sure I know what he was doing, just checking in on him, see how he was doing. He'd obviously text me as well and, and try to give me some pointers and advice throughout the season, like, look, you need to step this up, you need to do this, and, and I took it on very well. He stayed in touch with everybody while he was away, talking to Pat Conson, hang in there, man, you know, keep plugging, tough one the other night, or hey, great win, Zach August, keep your head up. Sitting at home, you know, watching my team play was definitely tough, you know, uh, those are the guys I came in with, you know, I've been there with them for two, three, four years, so, you know, just having them go out there and, you know, play without me. I know every game was close, so, you know, when the game came down to the end, you know, last possession, last couple possessions, and knowing that I was that guy that helped close games for them, you know, was really difficult because I knew if I was out there, you know, I could help get that last stop or help get that last basket. It was very hard on him watching us not be very successful. You know, that, like, he took that personally. And, and you know, I, my, my tongue with him was, you know, hey, uh, you're gonna be back next year and we're gonna attack next year. But in the meantime, be supportive of the guys out here. The toughest game for me to watch had to be when I was there in person at the uh, ACC tournament, the Wake Forest game. You know, knowing, just knowing that, you know, Eric, Garrick, Tom, you know, Pat Crowley, those were those guys' last game. And, you know, I couldn't help be a part of that or I couldn't help, you know, extend the season. Knowing that I could, you know, help pull out a win maybe and, you know, extend some guys' careers. And, you know, just having, you know, my guys that I came in with going out with a loss and, you know, not being able to play in the postseason, just all that mixed into one was definitely the toughest game for me to watch. I was excited to get back on campus, you know, um, to be able to get back with the guys and the coaches and, you know, just to be on campus and to be back with everybody felt good. When he came back the first weekend, we did some team building things and I think we needed to air out some things and we did and we aired them out very openly and honestly in our locker room. Because I remember uh, Jay coming back in the summer when we had our first practice and uh, we really got well. Jay had great talk and practice, and really everyone still listened to him, respected him. No one really kind of like shied away from him. He was still the same guy, and I think he's becoming a better leader every day. It was great. I mean, Jay, that's my boy. JG, we, JG, that's my boy. Uh, it, was, it was great to finally have him back on campus. Me from now versus me a year ago, I think uh, I just appreciate things a lot, a lot more. You know, uh, you know, I got to make sure I'm taking advantage of my opportunities a lot more, you know, taking things pretty, pretty seriously, and you know, just, just not taking things for granted. Stopping by to see me, me more frequently, just coming on in. Didn't have to ask him to stop by. Coach, what are we doing today? What do you think? You know, texting me and, and initiating the communication instead of me initiating it. And I think he's been really good with our young guys, like with Bonzi, Martin Gevin, and Matt Farrell. He has really kind of taken those guys under his wing a little bit. He made a comment to me, he said, Coach, I know if I was here, I could have got DJ more confident. I could have got Demetrius more confident. 
I could have. I mean, he, and, and you know what? He's right. Uh, I think he's a lot more vocal, and uh, I think he's trying to get to know all the teammates better instead of just hanging out with certain guys. I think he's more open to ideas, and I don't know. I don't know what it is. If he went home, who he talked to, I don't know who it was, or if he had a conversation with Coach Bray. But like I said, I think he's becoming a better leader every day, and he's he just has more of an open mind. He come back as a man now, and he's he's a whole different type of Jaron than he was before. Uh, and he has individual goals that he wants to, to reach, and he's not stopping. He's focused on it as well as collectively as a team. So I feel like he's going to be a, he's going to do a great job this year, helping us and leading. It. He wants to win. You know, certainly he's an NBA prospect. I believe he's a first round pick prospect. But he's coming back to win. He's coming back to be with his teammates, uh, and he knows all of that will take care of itself if we have a good year. Notre Dame fans should expect to see a lot from me this year. You know, um, you know, Coach Bray tells me, you know, I don't have to make up for last year. And this is a new season, but you know, in the back of my mind, you know, this is this is it for me. So, you know, I'm giving everything I got, and um, you know, I'm trying to get our team back to where we were, and uh, you know, even beyond that point. We would talk about this at Armando's, the barber shop down the street. Uh, they would ask me, they're like, "How's Jaron looking? How's Jaron looking?" I'm telling them that he's a he's a whole different type of Jaron, like I mentioned earlier. And, and, be prepared to be amazed because he's had a lot. He's a he's a lot. He's focused on. He's determined to get a job done. You know, we we lost two very high-profile athletes um, for to academic matters um, in the last year, and I've had so many people uh, say, "God, you know, man, that's a tough place." You know, that's can they change that rule? Maybe they should do something else. I said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. That's who we are at Notre Dame." And we're really proud of it. And what's great about both those young men, they never wavered wanting to come back here and understood, I've got to be a better person. I'm going to be better when I come back. I'm not going to be embarrassed. I'm not going to run from it. I'm coming back to set things right. I think it speaks volumes to the mission of this place, our commitment to educating the total person. And, you know, we're not using them as athletes. If we were, both those guys would have been around and maybe only been suspended a game or two. I love our mission and our philosophy and our guys understand it here and I think both young men that have come back are great stories, are, will be great ambassadors for us and will look back when they're adults and they come back to reunions and go, best thing that ever happened to me. I can, I can definitely see that. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a type of believer that you know, everything happens for a reason. You know, it might take a long time for you to realize what, what that reason was, but definitely, you know, I can look back on this and say, you know, this is definitely the best thing that ever happened to me because, you know, you never know, you know, something could have happened last year or, you know, I could have made a wrong decision, but, you know, I'm back here for a whole nother year and, you know, I get to learn some more.